Dear students, welcome back to your favorite channel, EME Education Made Easier, a channel just for you. And today I am here with the summary of the chapter, The Hack Driver, taken from the supplementary reader of class 10th, that is, Footprints Without Feet. So the story has been written by Sinclair Lewis, and the summary goes like this. The narrator, who is a law graduate with honors, works as a junior assistant clerk in a distinguished law firm. Here, he undergoes the unpleasant training period where his work is restricted to serve summons on people. This reveals the unpleasant side of the city life to him and he even considers returning to his native town where he can work as a real lawyer. One day, he is sent to New Malian, a village some 40 miles away, to serve summons on a man called Oliver Lutkins. This fellow is required as a witness in a case but has been ignoring letters of the law firm. On reaching the railway station, the narrator is disappointed to see the muddy streets and ill-maintained rows of wooden shops in New Malian. The only saving grace is a delivery man who is about 40, red-faced, cheerful, a bit plump and dressed in well-worn clothes. The narrator finds him to be a friendly and likable fellow. He tells him the purpose of his visit and tries to sound secretive about it. This delivery man claims that he knows Lutkins very well and offers to drive the narrator round the village in his hack to help in locating Lutkins. A bargain is struck at $2 an hour and the narrator discloses his plan to board the afternoon train back to city. The delivery man brings his hack which is more of a black box on wheels. The narrator is instantly touched by the hack driver's friendly warmth and reveals to him that he is there to serve summons to Lutkins. The hack driver proposes to begin their search from Fritz's shop where Lutkins might have gone to try his hand at a game of poker. He very proudly tells the narrator that his business is called William Magnuson Fancy Carting and Hacking and that people in the village call him Bill Magnuson. As the hunt for Lutkins progresses, Bill keeps talking about Lutkins' skill at being dishonest and gradually impresses upon the narrator that it's going to be extremely difficult to find him. Bill leads the narrator first into Fritz's and instructs him to stay behind, otherwise Lutkins should become suspicious and escape. Bill inquires about Lutkins from Fritz who glances at the narrator and answers that Lutkins was at his shop a little while ago but has probably gone over to Gustav's for a shave. At Gustav's too, the narrator lingers at the door but they do not find Lutkins. The owner is annoyed at Lutkins as the latter owes him a dollar and 35 cents. However, one of the customers tells the hack driver and the narrator that he has seen Lutkins walking down the main street. Bill guesses that Lutkins has probably gone to Gray's for a shave where he is again missed by only 5 minutes. They look for him at the pool room where they are told that Lutkins had just gone to buy a packet of cigarettes. Thus, every time they are very close to getting Lutkins but miss him by inches. After some time, the narrator feels hungry and suggests having lunch at a restaurant. Bill turns down the offer and convinces the narrator to bring lunch for him from his house. He charges him half a dollar for that. The duo sits atop Wade's Hill and enjoys the view while having the lunch. The narrator understands that Bill was making some money in this manner but does not mind it as he too was going to build his firm for all this expenditure. As they enjoy their lunch at the hillside, Bill gives details of the people of New Malian and makes fun of a few of them. Such a lively description of the countryside catches the narrator's fancy and he virtually falls in love with it. Once the lunch is over, they again resume their hunt for Lutkins. A friend of Lutkins believes that Lutkins has gone over to his mother three miles north. Bill wants the narrator to be wary of Lutkins' mother, whom he describes as about nine feet tall and four feet thick. 
rough tempered woman fully trained in the art of swearing lutkins's mother denies having any knowledge of her son's whereabouts bill then demands to search the house and claims that they have a legal right to do so the woman goes to the kitchen and comes out with a hot iron rod and frightens both the men forcing them to beat a hasty retreat however they succeed in peering at all the windows as the house is only single story high They also search for Lutkins in the barn and the stable but do not find him. All the while the woman with murder in her eyes laughs at them. By this time the narrator's return journey is due and he and Bill head towards the railway station. The narrator is so overwhelmed by this visit that he keeps thinking about the simplicity and friendliness of the people of New Malian. He thinks he has found a treasure and has discovered a new way of life. He also views the possibility of settling down there to practice law and is not at all sorry for not having found Lutkins. The next morning everybody in the office is annoyed with the narrator and he feels that his legal career has come to an end even before commencing he is again sent back to new million and a person who knows lutkins accompanies him the narrator feels sorry as the presence of another man with him would deprive him of the opportunity to loaf around the village one more time at new million station the narrator notices bill standing near his cart talking and laughing with lutkins mother he finds this strange but anyhow points out bill to the man who accompanies him he tells him that bill is the person who had helped him in looking for lutkins his colleague exposes the narrator's foolishness by instantly telling him that bill was none other than lutkins himself when the narrator serves summons to lutkins the latter laughs at him He mockingly tells the narrator to have coffee with their neighbor because that was the only family that had missed meeting the city boy the previous day. That's all for today. In case of any doubts or queries, you can drop us a message on Instagram or you can also drop them in the comment section below. I'll revert to them as soon as possible. See you in the next video. Till then.